Good morning, delegates, fellow governing board members and council, federation and local officers and staff, and our many honored guests. And welcome to Washington, D.C. When Bruce Ridge assumed the chairmanship of Ixom in 2006, George W. Bush was president, Facebook switched to an open registration policy, and America's heady real estate and Wall Street bull markets were beginning to feel increasingly choppy. Bruce Ridge's 10-year run as Exxon chair is not only record-setting for its length, it could well be argued that this was also one of the most challenging decades for orchestras and orchestra musicians in Exxon's history. It was downright prophetic on Bruce's part to roll out Ixam's calls to action in 2000, late 2007, for those calls started coming in quicker than many of us had imagined. Thus far, Ixam musicians have assisted 10 orchestras with contributions totaling over $1.5 million of greatly needed support for their colleagues during some surrealistically tough labor disputes. The March 2008 release of the Flanagan Report on the health of the American Symphony Orchestra, followed by the long economic downturn that began in September of that year, combined to throw Ixam and our member orchestras into turbulent, uncharted waters. As an example, in his opening address to our 2010 conference in Houston, former President Brian Rood mentioned that in the first 18 months of the recession, more than 30 Exxon orchestras revised or renegotiated not only wages, but benefits and working conditions as well. Instead of treating this recession as a cyclic event, as are all recessions, during these years, the managements and boards of many Exxon orchestras, armed with fresh yet highly questionable statistics from that Flanagan report, repeatedly spun our orchestra's fiscal challenges to the press as our industry's new permanent reality. And with that, the management side of our field, as reflected in certain statements and actions of the League of American Orchestras, began a scramble to try and reinvent itself, its mission, its orchestras, and our jobs, all meant to circumvent some never completely articulated sky is falling scenario. During this time, a series of buzzwords were reported being heard simultaneously at negotiating tables around the country, as well as, not coincidentally, at league conferences. We were just starting to almost get used to the phrase structural deficit when they started flinging other new terms at us like new business model, donor fatigue, relevancy, sustainability, and finally restructuring. Ah, uh, restructuring. With this, management's had an elegant sanitary term for simple <coughs> contract gutting. And in just a few years, management's draconian attempts at slashing player contracts around the country ran the gamut, starting with smaller budgeted orchestras and marching right up to the doors of Ixom's very largest. No one was immune. During this amazingly stressful time, Bruce's leadership extended far beyond the calls to action that he initiated. His site visits to orchestras in distress will always be remembered by those he visited as inspirational and even healing as they endured or stared down the barrel of a labor dispute. His outreach efforts to orchestra musicians boosted the morale, the understanding, and the resolve of many hundreds of our colleagues, and at times when they sorely needed it. Looked for a while like orchestras struggling through the recession with seemingly no end in sight, plus trying to counter the unfairly negative press on orchestras spewing from the media, might be the only in, uh, dominant industry themes during Bruce's decade as chair. That was until Ixom and some of our member orchestras began getting trained in crafting and broadcasting our own message to our various constituents and communities using the web, social media, and other tools. The Atlanta Symphony, through Michael Moore, brought PR specialist Randy Watley to Ixom's attention, and Bruce had the vision to welcome him into his and into our universe. Bruce recognized Randy's abilities to tap into and direct orchestra musicians' creative talents toward fashioning, and more importantly, assuming accountability for their own PR campaigns. 
that last part being a huge contextual shift that has the power and the potential to change everything. Since that time, these internally organized PR campaigns have repeatedly proved to be a crucial component in most of the successful contract settlements achieved by Ixom orchestras over the past several years. They've also gone a very long way towards countering a large swath of that negativity heaped upon our industry by our industry's own leadership. Though we now, for the most part, see this recession through the rearview mirror, restructure fever has yet to com work itself completely through the system, and with some CEOs and board chairs out there, the fever may never completely break. In the process, know that management throughout the league will be watching to see if our musicians keep up with all their PR and community outreach once their CBAs are ratified. That's a bird's eye view of our industry over the better part of Bruce Ridge's amazing 10 year run and with the tip of the hat for some of the many ways he impacted this decade. As we soon transition into a new era, what lies ahead for Exxon? Actually, it's a bit of a hot topic in some circles these days and I'd like to bring up a couple of important issues related to it. One current trend deserving of our attention comes partly from the planet shrinking effect that the web and social media have had upon our industry. With online tools like Facebook and Twitter, orchestra musicians are now globally interconnected at a level to which most of us could barely even conceive a few years ago. One logical industry development arising from this shrinking planet is the continued development of and our growing association with FIM, the Paris-based International Federation of Musicians and a truly international symphonic player conference. We are honored and privileged to have Benoit Machoil, the general secretary of FIM, here with us as a guest presenter on Saturday to talk with us about his organization and about FIM's fourth international convention being held next May in Montreal. I fully expect our symphonic player conferences will have a strong presence at the Montreal event and over time I can see few future collaborations increasing as we get to know one another better and learn more from each other's situations. And to expand on this global spirit of information sharing, we're also very privileged to have guest presenters from England, the Netherlands and Australia here to give us glimpses of the industry from their countries and from their unique points of view. I hope you'll all take the time to introduce yourself to these folks and get to know them while they're here, as I'm sure they're all just as eager to get to know and share their stories with us. Some stories we'll find quite unique. Others I'm sure we'll find almost eerily similar. And finally, a few conferences back, Bruce began encouraging delegates to run for our local union boards as a way to boost Ixom Orchestra representation within our locals, in turn boosting our locals' understanding of orchestra musicians' issues. Over the past several conferences, we've learned that many of us had indeed got on board with our locals, and as a result, Ixom has made remarkable improvements with orchestral representation at the community level <coughs> within the Federation. This is a truly positive trend, and going forward, we hope you and your orchestra committee members will continue to run and serve, representing your orchestra on your exec local's executive board. As we transition into this new phase, I'd like to take a similar step towards increasing the overall visibility of some of our Ixom reps at home and encourage any delegate who is not already a member of their orchestra committee or negotiating committee to run for office. Many delegates are already ex officio members of their committee as directed through their bylaws, something the governing board does not and cannot mandate, yet we still strongly encourage. And others run simply because they are drawn to this type of service. Whatever the case, when we as delegates are directly involved in internal governance and in negotiations on behalf of our colleagues, then we become more efficient conduits of essential information between our orchestra and Ixon and the information from our conferences flows more directly to our orchestra committees, often when they need it the most. Even a resolution from the 1996 Vail Exxon conference takes on this issue with this statement. Be it resolved 
that Ixam calls upon all its constituent orchestras in which the Ixam delegate is not a member of the orchestra committee to establish a policy whereby the Ixam delegate is encouraged to attend all meetings of the orchestra committee to transmit and gather the valuable information which allows the full value of Ixam membership to be enjoyed by the orchestra members. And I'd now like to close with a short quote from former Ixam chair Fred Zanone, who addressed this issue with these words from his article, How Delegates Make Ixam Work. Because we are a rank and file organization, and because we do not make agreement a condition of membership, Ixam's most single most effective tool is persuasion. We must have the power to persuade and the willingness to be persuaded. We have been designated by our orchestras as leaders and activists. Ixam asks us to affirm and reaffirm that position throughout the season. We are the voice in our orchestras of American orchestra musicians united on a national level. We are the persons who must constantly examine the effect our orchestra's actions have upon other orchestras. Each of us must be a leader, an organizer, a conduit of information, the conscience of a movement of caring and involved and active musicians who insist on improving the institutions through which we produce our art. And with that, thank you everyone and have a wonderful conference in Washington.